If you're an ARCHICAD user, you may or may not have heard of CI Tools. What CI Tools is, it is basically just a series of tools provided by Graphisoft on top of your existing subscription to make your workflow significantly easier and quicker. So the main fundamental essential elements of CI Tools are the roof coverings and the wall coverings. You also have the added benefit of the slab covering tool, but we won't cover that too much today. First of all, let's start with a wall covering tool. So if we were to select any random wall, and just draw a single random leaf. Let's just draw a box for the purpose of argument. All we have to really do is select any of our walls that we wanna activate our CI tools on. We wanna to go to our top menu in CI tools. We wanna to come down to coverings and we wanna select wall coverings. What you're then gonna see is a new dialog box pop up with a series of all sorts of settings. The main settings that you wanna be looking at from the get go is the covering section right here. So built into CI Tools is a series of predefined coverings which basically allow you to do what you really wanna do in great detail. Rather than creating a new texture, for example, we can instantly go to our weatherboard and you'll see there is a genuine weatherboard automatically created in 3D rather than trying to emulate that with some sort of texture and texture detail. So with CI tools, we have a number of these different patterns. First of all, we can go absolutely no wall covering, completely removed. We can come down to our generic board, which is basically something like plywood. You could use that as an example. And A would be the thickness of the actual board in itself. And B would be the bracket or the furring channel behind or in front of the timber. So for this instance, if we were going to go for a 35 mil furring channel, that would sit on the outside of our wall and then an additional 30 mil of plywood or whatever this material is in your case, which would mean our wall would increase by 65 millimeters. If we continue to scroll through these elements, we can go to a board and bat system, which is extremely useful if you're trying to create that nice board and bat effect. We can manipulate it, rotate it, do whatever we like. We also have bricks and blocks. So if you want to create a reverse brick veneer wall or a brick veneer wall, potentially even use a brick facade on something like a precast concrete wall, use this as some sort of stone effect. You can use this covering to basically emphasize exactly what you're trying to do and be able to detail that properly. Next, we have our basic corrugated look. So if you're looking for some sort of tin, fencing, roof covering, anything in a corrugated look, you can manipulate and change this to exactly how you see fit. Next, we have logs as an example, which could be used as a retaining wall system to give you that nice log wood effect. In addition, we also have panels, which this one is extremely complex and you can manipulate it and play with it as much as you want. We're basically seeing a panel set up that is depicted by these elements here. So if I only wanted that to be 1200 by 1200 squares, we could change this if I wanted my thickness to be 50 mil, a nice thick profile, or let's say I wanted the cut in to be quite deep, quite steep, large, we can emulate and change any of these to a real world object and a real world cladding material. We could even go ahead and change that to a 45 degree angle to create something completely different that you usually don't see in ARCHICAD. We also have a ribbed pattern, which is basically a high profile corrugated metal that can be used in any sort of architectural cladding. I use this one quite a lot. It is an exceptional profile if you get the settings correct. Next, we have our standard shiplap, shiplap smooth. We have our shingles if we were gonna go for something a little bit different. We have our vinyl weatherboard and we have our actual weatherboards themselves. So from the get-go, we have a series a very important, very critical cladding elements that we can use to enhance our architecture. So to give you a good example of what exactly we're talking about, 3D, take a look at our cladding system. What you'll see is we've got a weatherboard effect rotated on a 90 degree angle, which is completely inaccurate to what we would usually have. So if I was to select all of these claddings, which are independent to the actual wall structure, change that back to zero, we'll have a traditional horizontal pattern weatherboard that if I zoom in close enough, you'll be able to see the 3D elements that I was talking about previously. Now, let's say we want this one here to be a completely different product. We come into our weatherboard, let's go boards and battens, let's change that to a 90 degree orientation, press okay, and there we go. It's a completely different cladding already attached to that existing wall being completely unchanged. Now these coverings can go even more in detail. So if we go Command T, open up the settings again, we can scroll through and we can change our 
corners in our external and our internal corners, how we wanna see that connection detail. So at the moment I have a regular, we can go beveled, we can go through all of these settings basically to make it exactly what we're looking for. That applies basically to all the corners, the tops, the bottoms, everything in between, the joins between the claddings, the horizontal trim, the wall tops, head heights, sill heights, basically all of your openings, you can go through all of these settings one by one, change every piece individually one by one. So if you wanted your sill cladding to be a different color to the head cladding, you could go in and change that. If you wanted your jams to be bigger than your seals for some odd reason, you can go ahead and do that. You have full flexibility and control in this one 3D element. Now, if we come back to our ground floor plan and just simply create a very quick roof, we'll see that Arcad basically creates a very generic roof structure that doesn't really give you too many options or too much flexibility, especially when trying to detail properly. So if we clicked on our roof, went back up to CI tools up the top, clicked on coverings, went to roof covering this time instead of wall covering. Again, using the same methods as we previously discussed, coming straight to our cladding, we can have flat roof, corrugated, ribbed, shingles, Spanish tiles, or just normal tiles at our disposal within seconds. So if I simply clicked on corrugated, pressed OK, we would instantly have a corrugated roof available for us to document and continue our project with incredible accuracy. Now, for instance, if we wanted this section of the roof to be something different, or if we wanted a different gutter profile, we could simply go into our settings, come down to our flashings, for example. Let's say we didn't want a flat flashing, we wanted a square ribbed, and let's say we come down to our gutter, we didn't want a quarter round gutter, we wanted a square gutter on that profile. Pressing OK, we'll see everything has changed very rapidly, very quickly. We have a square gutter as opposed to our quarter round gutter. We have different flashings. This system isn't always perfect. So if you're creating a complex roof structure, sometimes shows your hips and your valleys and your gutters in the wrong place. We can come back to our CI tools, coverings, edit roof edges, and we can double click on any of these lines that are depicted by our roof structure below and change what we're actually seeing. So if for some reason that wasn't a hip, it was a barge. I could easily click OK and it would be changed to a barge. So if I delete this section, you'll see that we've created a barge on this side of our roof. Coming back to coverings, editing that again, double clicking on that barge, going back to a junction and pressing OK, it automatically changes back to a junction. Now, one of the best things as well is if we wanted to come back into our floor plan, select one of these roofs, you'll see these pink little hotspots at the end. If I select one of these hotspots, drag them out ever so slightly, show my floor below as a trace reference, just so I can see where my actual wall is, connect that back to my wall and come into 3D, we'll see that it's created a downpipe for me automatically that I can simply extend to the bottom of my wall and manipulate this however I saw fit. Now, in my experience, ArcCAD 24 has had a few glitches with the CI tools coverings, but ArcCAD 25 is working phenomenally well. There is no glitches. So if you're using the 4D library windows, as an example, the windows and doors packages, the 4D library in ArcCAD 24 won't cut these coverings perfectly. However, in ArcCAD 25, it cuts them instantly. So as an example, coming back to our ground floor plan, let's simply just drop a random window in the side of our project and there you go it is instantly cut into that cladding it creates your head seal and jams that you don't have to go ahead and create that's all for me my name is david tomich i'll see you next time